And here we are, a special edition of The Gentle Mentor, live. live. I'm actually in the room with actually you. This is great. in the room rather than over the Zoom meeting. Over the Zoom. Software, actually... So we took in, some. We took some. Up the part of the same. We, space. we took some opportunity to avoid social distancing. Yes. And uh, actually, social. I think this is. I, I like to think of this as our peaceful protest. The other important place that no, is a, a critical one-word sentence is with ourselves, because. We live, as most people, and if you were surprised about division, you'll be surprised to find out that our culture is constantly selling the busy model. Even the church has kind of let go of the Sabbath as an actual thing, and now it's become kind of a proverbial, you know, figure, figurative sort of, right. uh, you know, it's, right. uh, it's, it's, it's rest, but, you know, it probably meant like go play sports all day because that's right. restful. Right. The know that we need to avail ourselves up starts with some sort of self-examination. And what you need to be, what I think you need, in my opinion, to be aware of is, are you saying, I'm really busy, as an excuse to escape people? And not only do you do it, but you do it chronically. Mm. To my mind, a Christian and I'm talking just about believers here, I think this is a good rule for general humanity, but especially for believers, that you should never be too busy for another person, for another human being. Agreed. Like I said, unless they fall in that first category, this is a person who's proven time and time again they're only there to use you. And you don't hold animus toward them, not bitterness. You just, you, you gotta, but you gotta break out of the relationship. So you put that aside. So this is everybody else. Are you chronically saying, I'm too busy to get out of social engagements, invites to come hang out, go have coffee, go have a dinner? Are you using that? And if you are using, I'm too busy, then it's time to say no to yourself. It's time to recognize this is a huge red flag. If you have to put this up, to avoid relationship with other human beings, right. you're probably due for a no yourself. And you need to say, no, I'm going to stop doing this. Then proactive step is simply reverse course. And the next time somebody says, oh, we should get together, pull out your calendar and go, yes, be proactive and say, we are going to get together. This is when, when's a good time for you, you know, and all yeah, those types I, of things. I can't, I can't, Doug, because, because my, my kids got gymnastics and, and two of my other kids have, you know, tutoring lessons I have to drive them to. And, um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, basketball practice and, and oboe lessons. Okay. Continue the self-examination. Are those things adding value to your life, or are they just sucking away time and energy Wait and a minute. resources? Now, those are my children. I am investing my life into those kids to create in them a potential NBA all-star. Okay. Who needs that? <laughs> I'm playing the devil's advocate. I know you are. And, and, and what I'm trying to do is think of how I want to get around to my next point. Okay, Which I, I thought be, I was trying to set you up. I was trying to set you up we, with another we had, no. Well, I can't think of exactly how to get to it. For, because we say no to others. We say no to ourselves. Selves. The other no that I was thinking of was your kids. Yeah. No. People don't say no to their kids. No, people but don't say no to their kids. that's a good place to start. Do you constantly, either because you're afraid your kids will think you're a villain or because other parents will think you're a villain. And I think it's it, a lot of that. And I mentioned yeah. to you, I mentioned to you I that my... It, I think it's both. And when we, I had my first child... My, my wife told me, and we were having this conversation about being busy, and she told me, she said, you know, I remember when our, our first child was born, and she said it was one of my family members had asked her, oh, I'm so excited for you guys. You've got a, you know, a new baby. What are you going to do? You, you're gonna, is it gymnastics? Is it flute lessons? Is it what this and that? And so my wife started feeling pressure that uh, in order to be a good mom, I have to put my daughter in all kinds of things. And so we did. And, and, you know, we, we, we had this rule that with my kids, we had this rule that if you start something, you at least have to finish. So if you start the right. soccer season, you're going to finish. Right. If you start piano lessons and there's eight lessons in the course, you're going to finish those eight lessons if you're going to start something. And I, and I get that. But just booking so much of their time and so much of our time to taxi 
and go to places and and what are we really building in them anyway? And that's probably a whole other conversation too. Well, but I think it is, but it's probably a conversation that is worth having at some point. Um, yeah, there's uh, uh, the cultural push. There's there's the kid push. We talked about how you know um, prior to well according according to Craig Ferguson, the the all wise Craig Ferguson, the Beatles kind of were the tipping point for our culture in that prior to that most things were marketed towards adults because adults had jobs and incomes and at the point that the Beatles gained popularity then all of marketing switches over to youth focused marketing so we're, they're selling products to our kids so our kids will come want get this for me and so it puts us in a bad position we don't like to tell our kids no, no. we don't want to yep. be the bad guy nope. to our kids no. um so the culture's marketing to us. They're marketing to our kids. And then that leaves us in a position where it's hard to feel like you can escape. You're either going to give in or you're going to feel like an ogre at the end of the whole thing. So, yeah, we say no to other people. We can say no to ourselves. We can say no to our children and actually do them a favor. Because when life gets hard, you can see out in the world around us today that children who are raised in situations where there is no hardship to overcome don't oh, deal well man. with hardship when it comes. And everybody's going to face hardship in their life of some kind. We've, we've, we've raised a generation. Naturally, we're not raising men anymore, but you know, we, we, we don't have that good transition from a boy to manhood, yep. from boyhood to manhood. You know, we're not, uh, I say we're not generally. It, it's, it's, and it's hard. I don't there, know. That's, there are so many people I know in the, like, not young, young, but like the probably upper 20s, early 30s, where you have a relational situation where you have a young woman who is working a job and she is either living with or married to a young man who plays video games all day. Mm hmm. Come on, somebody. And we have a look at a culture where everyone is told to... Basically, the, the, the great value is youth. And so we are encouraging a sort of immaturity, a... Uh, I've, you should I'm not supposed to say this word, a retardation of sorts. And it's not the mental disability. It is a willful... It's the slowing down. That's that's exactly what that's, the word means. Well, it's and, and, slow. And, and, but the whole but the whole premise of our conversation is to slow down. Right. But, but that's we're not, slowing down our our slow down the pace of your life, the, not yeah. slow down your intellect. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying you know, like, that. I'm well, we had we had started what? to talk about the time and the money and the energy we spend, like carting kids to various activities, right. lessons, right. karate, right. whatever. What if you took that same amount of time? And didn't spend it on going and doing, but just spend it on engaging with your child. Yes. That would yield a much stronger benefit for that kid than yeah. any karate lesson or anything's going to do. No, absolutely, and I agree. And let me tell you this, because there's one there's one person in particular in my life that makes me feel like a bad parent, parent and he doesn't know how he does it. He doesn't even know that he does. I'm sorry. I know. It's okay. I forgive you. Uh, and I'll tell you who it is. <laughs> It's my rabbi. Oh. <laughs> because, and here's what's funny too, is because I remember we had a conversation about three or four years ago about family. And he said, he said, yeah, he goes, you know, you, you, you Gentiles are different than us Jews because he said, you're naturally That's we are. why we got different That's names. That's why we got different names. But he said, he if, said. If he, we were the same, we'd just be the other Jews. <laughs> <laughs> but we are. Really? Are yeah. we grafted? Well, in our mind. In our mind, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, where was it going? This you're so derailing. Um, he, oh, the family. He and this is, he makes me feel like a bad parent because I see his interaction with his kids, and he's got like six, seven. He's got a newborn. Um, but he has he, his interactions with kids make me go, oh my gosh, I'm a bad parent. But he does. They don't do. They don't do basketball. They don't do karate. They don't do gymnastics. But there's so much engagement with him because, and this is what he said. He said, here's the difference in our cultures. He said, your culture, the center of everything is the church. He said, in our culture, the center of everything is the home. And here's what's funny is because now that we're through this whole pandemic thing or going through this whole pandemic thing, we're starting to move towards that the home is the center of things. Well, guess what? It's too late. 
I mean, it's not too late, but we're way behind. Right. Because that's where, and you're absolutely right. So back on that, hey, because in it, anyway, I see the reactions, the, the, the interactions with his kids. And I'm thinking, oh, but I've got my kid in this, and I've got my kid in this, and i got my kid in this. But do you know them? Right. I don't know if you're familiar with, like, Mormon culture at all, but that's one thing that Mormon culture holds, like, above I'm everything. I'm Mormon. All right. No. That's awesome. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. How's your rabbi feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, again, I, I'm not into Mormonism itself, but I've always admired the emphasis they put on the family unit. Right. Right. And it's admirable. It is. It is. And, you know, and you can take this, and, and speaking to people who are listening, you can take this and, you know, and interpolate this for your life. You know, are you busy? Really check those things out. Really look and see. Am, am I really just creating stuff to do? Or am I creating real connection between my friends, my children, my spouse? Am I really creating those connections? Am I taking some time to rest? Am I taking some time to go, you know what? I don't want to sit with a screen in front of my face. Right. I want to sit with the horizon in front of my face. I want to sit with the trees in front of my face. I don't want to always be consumed. How much time do we spend? We spend so much time Isn't on our screens. Isn't it funny too that we we call ourselves consumers, but it's actually we who are being consumed. We are the we are the product. We are the consumer. Right. We are the product. There's no doubt about that. You watch some specials and you and there's some documentaries, and you know that we are the product. But if you want to really protest against being used as the product, start getting off your devices. Say no. Burn Just them. say no. Burn your device. The, uh, if you want to burn something, you want to protest and be really free, get get off the freaking screen. Easy. Okay, I'm all right. Okay. You said the frick word. <laughs> but yeah, here we are well, on yeah. the screen. Thanks well, we, for watching, we, we, everyone. We started, we started with uh, Protestant, the Protestant work ethic. Protest. You said same, are we, they the same words? Can, yes. That's where Protestant comes from. Son protest. of a gun. You want a way to protest. You want a way to remove all of these unnecessary things in your life that have littered the, the landscape of your life with constant busyness and all these things that you're doing for your children, allegedly. My one rabbit ear was off. Okay. Right, sorry. And like, okay, well, what if we disengage? What if we said we were going to do what we always do, which is proactive. What can we do proactively? And we withdraw from those things. We had a culture based on a Protestant work ethic, which was you work six days and then you rest. Somewhere, the church kind of got rid of that message and started to support the cultural idea, busy, busy, busy. That's how a lot of churches up until coronavirus were run. Busy, busy, busy. We've got to have activities. We've got to have stuff going on all the time. So we've suggested unplug from that screen. Unplug. You, you, the heartbreak of watching a family on vacation, not your own, because I would punch somebody, but watching a family walk by and mom and dad are looking at the sights and the kids behind them are like this. And that's, that's again, that's a product of the culture. You're not going to escape it without taking action. You're going to have to be proactive. It's not just going to stop being what it is. No, it's not. And you're right. We have to be proactive. So what are some things that we can do? Uh, I'll throw these out at you. Uh, number one, no screens at the dinner table. I don't care if you're oh, eating out or amen. eating in. Amen. Amen. No, I don't care if you're eating out. There's nothing that hurts me more than going out with my wife and sitting at a table and I'll look around at all the couples on their devices. I'm like, what's the point? Yep. Just stay home. I mean, what do you, I mean, if you're there to eat, you're there to eat, I guess, but just why? I mean, we're not there. We're not interacting with each other. We used to, I used to, when, in my later years as a youth pastor, I used to have a game called uh, Phone Stack. And so when all my youth leaders would get together and we'd all go out to dinner, and sometimes they would be students, and they're mostly college students, but we played a game called Phone Stack. And that is when you got to the table, you put your phone, everybody put their phones in a stack on the table. And the first one before the bill came, the first one who reached for their phone, had to pay <laughs> now that's a game it's that's a, a game i can get behind it's it's a game and here's it's so funny because i remember one particular uh time we sat down to eat and there was probably 15 or so of us at the table and w this guy was sitting next to me as a college student and we learned so much about him that we never knew mm. about you know the type of girls that he was interested just stuff about life it wasn't profound but anyway it was just like Man, I never knew that about you, about his family history. And it's just, it's so, it's so rich. Get into the mess. Mm. 
get into the mess. Get it, into the it, mess with people. It can be really engaging. It is. It and, is really And more engaging. often than not, it will enrich you as much as it helps. Them. Well, the thing about it is, is, is he often connects with me from time to time and says, hey, I remember that time that you really saw me. You saw who I was or you saw who I am or I was at the time because you were looking. You made us all stop. And anyway, so that's a few of the things we can do. How about, how about take some, how about take a, a season during the year where the family doesn't do any extracurricular things, whether it be a week or a month. Um, you know, I know some families that do like no spend November or not November, but no spend October, but they just don't spend anything right. other than just bills and food and, and whatever. I was going to... December's probably not the best month yeah. for that. But, you know, back to school. But you could pick a no, month. No air conditioning August. I want to start. <laughs> no, 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 please, no. I, we, I like we, my comfort. We had, we had mentioned briefly, kind of touched on the, the cigar philosophy. Yes. This is this is a cigar. It's not a costly item. I mean, it could be, if you're into something really expensive, you could find something costly. You can but spend some got, bucks on it. But what this thing represents is is like a break. Not a brake brake, but like the brake in your car. And right. it's something that causes you to slow down. Right. You can, you don't want to smoke cigars with your kids. That's a bad idea. But there Until are things you can do. I was, we talked earlier, I've never been an outdoors person, but being older, I can appreciate like the idea of going fishing. I never understood why somebody would want to stand out in the woods and throw a string in the water, even if, oh, I don't like going, even if I don't catch anything. I'm like, well, that is stupid. It's like, well, now you get it. That's right. a break. There's right. no phone. There's probably not very many people. Fish don't talk a lot. It's a way to slow everything down. And you're going to be talking with whoever's in the boat. Find those things to do with your family. Don't just say, we're not going to do this. Right. Say, we are going to do this. Whether it's going for a hike or going for a walk, uh, playing, you work in a garden. That's a great thing. Get your hands in the dirt. Do woodworking. There's all kinds of things you can do that aren't taking a nap rest, but are restful to your soul because it's something where you find peace and you can share that with people. Around right. You. And, and so, so for those of you maybe who don't have a family, so to speak, it, it's your, it's your group, it's your circle, it's your squad, get together and just chill. Yep. We, next Sunday, we've got uh, a group of college students come over to my house for a life group. And so they need a place to meet. So my wife's like, you guys can have our house. And we don't even have furniture upstairs because we're remodeling the living room. So we're like, we're giving up our couch downstairs, which you haven't been to my house since I bought the new couch, have you? Man, it, it is a, it, that is a, that couch loves you. When you sit on that couch, you can feel it just feel the love. loving you. Yes. Ooh. So I'm going to give up that couch for them just to come and hang out. And not just that, I'm going to cook hamburgers for them because I want them to just slow down. Just slow. I can't smoke cigars with them, <laughs> but I can slow down, sit on that this couch. That doesn't mean you can't smoke cigars near them. Uh, I'll probably be smoking at the grill. There you go. <laughs> but That'd be the place to do it. Nobody would notice. That's true. But the thing is, well, is this grill is hot tonight. I want to smoke. Wow, that's all that smoke. Who's where's the smoke coming from? I don't know where it's coming from. But the thing is, I want them to slow down. I want to give them an opportunity. So you guys just sit on this couch and talk about the mess that you got. Talk about the life. Talk about the good. Talk about the bad. Let me help you. I'm going to be the Martha. facilitator. You're the facilitator. The, the Martha. The Martha. The Martha. You're I'm going to be Martha the Martha. So they can marry. Let them marry. Let me Martha a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, facilitating the ability to break like that. Let your let your spouse get away, do something. Let your spouse have a friend over when you're not there and, and spend a couple nights. Allow me uh, to take this and kind of invert it. Okay. Because you said something. Uh, you were talking about the guy that said, thank you for seeing me. And it reminded me of something really weird. But then I thought, you know, this is this is probably worth bringing up. And if it's not, I'll edit it out. Okay. Because that's the kind of person I am. So I've thought about, I've studied a lot of people. When I find people interesting, I study them to figure out what it is. What's the thing? And there's this weird thing that I've noticed about a certain group of people. And they're a group of like three or four guys, names that I could mention that everyone would know. And one of the characteristics that I heard people, person after person who knew these people personally, they're not with us anymore, but who actually knew these people personally when they were alive, all said one same thing about them. When I was with him, he made me feel like I was the only person on earth. That's a tremendous thing. That's a tremendous power 
to have in another human being's life. Uh, the giving of love, giving him attention is the first act of love. This is one of my favorite quotes. Someday I'm going to so, figure okay, out. Okay, uh, back said. up. Say it again. Say it again. The giving of attention, when you give attention to someone, is the first act of love. That's the first way you show someone you love them is by paying attention to them, by right. listening to right. them, by making them feel like they're seen or heard. Right. Now, the the weird twisted part of the story is who these guys are that they said these things about, because one of them is Jim Jones. One of them's David Koresh. Well, there you go. Imagine who has had who has that had so influence much influence in a negative way <laughs> into people's lives. Right. Imagine if you took that same initiative and used it positively. Uh, in other words, don't have them join a cult and commit suicide. Well, there's that. But <laughs> you know, I'm not Bob Goff, and I don't think it is. Very difficult to make someone feel like they're the only person it's in the not. world. It's not. I really, if you back up and go, because that's intimidating, especially for introverts. It's intimidating to go, uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one with people and I've got it. It's really not that hard. Prepare it's, some questions. Here's my strategy guideline. Prepare some questions. I have got a, <clears throat> I, I, used the, I used to use the other app, uh, Evernote, but I use Not Not Notion now. And I keep a list of questions, and I've got a list of probably 200 questions that are just, they're just questions. And if I get ready to go into a dinner or a coffee with someone, I, I kind of scroll through those. And just, just throwing a cup, couple logs on the fire in there and letting them kind of ember. And there's things like, hmm. okay, where if you could choose any place to go and live in the U.S., where would you go? And it's just, just simple questions. I mean, they're not profound. Right. They're just, okay, what character in a book would you love to be if you could choose to be a character? Just simple things like that that draws if, people if out. If you're an introvert, if you have trouble Questions. starting conversation, Questions. you know, anything, yeah, man, the easiest thing in the world to do is ask somebody a question. Because first of all, it implies the You're the interested. Quote, it implies giving attention is the first act. Yeah. Of, I care. I want to hear about yep. you. Yep. It also is such a huge booster to that person because most people feel like nobody wants to hear from them. And right. the fact that you're actually going to invite them to expound and to share, most people will be like me and just go on and on and on. Right. And you, you don't have to say anything else. The, the hardest thing you'll have to do is listen to what they're saying and take it in and start to develop another question that you can hit them with as and soon as they get And that's done. a skill that takes some practice. And I, I've worked that over, that over the years, too. And that's a skill that takes some practice to be able to be listening to them. Because what are we thinking about when we talk to someone? You see all this. What we want to say what next. What we want to say next. <laughs> But that's not the thing. The thing is, what can I ask them about what they're talking about now? How can I dig deeper into that? Because everybody's favorite topic is themselves. themselves. Right. So, um, And the power of that influence, what it says to people that you're willing to, in a world where nobody, you know, we talked about social media and how it's kind of gas on this fire of, of yeah. busyness, you yeah. know, because it throws, you constantly are like vying against the advertisements of other families and, right. you know, what brands right. who are trying to promote their products and, oh man, look, they're doing all this stuff we can't afford to do. It's just such nonsense. And we, we buy into it so readily because that's how we are. We're human beings. And, and this other thing comes along and it says, again, it hits the brake and goes, what about about you yes what do you think right what do you feel about stop one-upping people with their stories yeah you know oh hey you know one one time i went to this restaurant oh i've been to that restaurant and i had this did you have that i had i'm um, all quit one upping people that's the, the the need to constantly think about what you're going to say next is the same thing in a conversational form it's yeah. the exact same yeah. set of instructions it's i'm trying to outdo you right Right. Because it's competition. Which, and we talked about that before. Competition, competition can be a good thing, but there are places it doesn't Well, belong. and, and it essentially, isn't when you're scrolling on social media, isn't that what we're in? We're in a competition? Yeah, absolutely. Because we're looking at, I'm looking, I'm say we're, because I'm, I'm going to say I, because that's, that's kind of, I do it too, we all do it. I'm looking at the picture going, I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. I wish I had those abs. I, my abs aren't like that abs. My, my buys aren't like this guy's buys. You know, uh, it's we're, we got to stop. We got to take some time just to relax. Just just, chill. just say no. Just say no. Just say no. Say no to yourself. Ah, say man. no to your loved ones. Say no to your loved ones. Say no. No is a complete sentence. 
Um, all right. You know, I bring Galatians 6, 9 into this a little oh, bit. Oh, do it. Let's have a Bible verse. Let's have a Bible verse. You ready? Memory verse time. Go. Do not grow weary in doing good. And here's something that I wrote down because this is the quote. This is the quote from Doug DeRage that I have started to build on. And you're very inspirational, Doug. You, you, your wisdom has led me through the years, has given me ambition, has given me hope. This particular quote that you said, I know I'm just doing this, I'm doing this on purpose. It's true, though. It's true. I just want everybody to know. I this, just, is, this is, yeah. It is. I, I just want this you to know I'm comedy. doing this on purpose, but it's, it is it is real. Go. Throw it. It is real. The Doug Drage quote. We talk about doing good. You told me one time, you said, when... You do good works. When God sees you do good works, God rewards you. When men see you do good works, they give you more work to do. And to me, that was like, ah, and sometimes, and I, I also have this other axiom in my life that sometimes it sucks to be uh, dependable. Um, because oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. That I, okay, maybe not sometimes, maybe a little more than sometimes. So when you're dependable, people depend on you. They want to do things, especially in an employment uh, situation where you've got a job and people see you do something good. Oh, man, he did so good at that. We want him to do this. And let the expectations begin. Yes. And Another then, episode. And then it doesn't come. It doesn't normally with the job situation. It doesn't normally come with, a, you know what? You did such a good job. Here's $200. You know, I don't remember, and I know, like, there's a place here in town that's kind of famous for being, like, a really great place to work because they have, like, the fun officer that comes around and tells you you're working too hard, take the day off. Mm -hmm. You know, anything like that would have seemed huge. Had somebody come on, you know what? We just appreciate what you're doing. Go ahead and go home early. Yeah. It wouldn't cost anything. Yeah. But never happened. No. (laughs) No. But anyway, so so the one thing that I wanted to get at was – which reminds me, and I don't, I don't want I'm to be. Sorry, I sidetracked you. No, you didn't, and I, I, I've, I've got in my head where I want to go with this because I, okay. I want to talk about the, the doing and the doing good. Yeah. Um, the other day, or you said something about being encouraging in the workplace, and the other day, I just, I had this thing where I was just like, there was a little tension in the office where I work, and uh, the, the, everybody else in the office where I work does something completely different. We, we share a, a common office space, and, and my team does something completely different than most of the people in that room. But I, so we don't, we, we're friends with them, but we don't work together. But I, I hear the right, conversations right. that's going on over there, and there was some tension about some stuff going on. I'm like, oh man, they're having a bad day over there. And we weren't having a bad day. We were good. So you cut the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I should have thought of that. That would have been a lot less expensive. That would have expensive. been my response, so. so I thought, you know what? I'm going, uh, I'm going over to the grocery store that's right over there. I'm getting two four packs of Crush, Orange Crush. And the next night, I went home. And I wrote little tags that said, um, you crush it, it matters, keep going. And I tied them to the crush and set them on everybody's desk early in the morning before they got there. And it was just that little bit of encouragement that just goes, and I'm not even their boss. Right. I can't even tell them to take the day right. off. Right, right. But you could do something. But I you could do something. something I could do. do something to say, you know what, I notice and I love you. This is a little trinkety thing. So, so that, maybe that's an example of doing good. Mm-hmm. Because there's there's a difference between doing and doing good. Sure. And in Galatians, Paul was talking about when you do good, don't grow weary. But he didn't say when you do, don't grow weary. He said when you do good. So that makes me think, okay, there's a difference between doing and doing good. We need to stay on the doing good side. Right. We need to focus in on that side because when we do good, it's a lot more rewarding. Because when we store our treasures in heaven... <laughs> Well, in a similar way, we had talked about the idea of busyness versus productivity. Yes. A lot of busyness is, again, that kind of subterfuge to make it look like you're working really hard. Ah, busy, busy, and you're not really producing anything. You're just being busy. Well, we do that when the boss walks in. Right. You know, my boss will walk in, he walks around the corner, and I'm like, I'm sitting on my phone, or, you know, he catches me in that moment. I've been busy. I've been productive. This was the, but mo- I'm the not, moment where you sit. There. I'm not busy. He or walks I'm, in. I'm standing leaning on the counter yeah. talking to one of the other people. Going, oh, really? Yeah. Did you see the game last night? Yeah. And then he walks in the corner and he's like, it's busy in here, aren't you? Uh, I'm like, no. No, I'm not. Working hard or working hardly hard, working. Hardly working. Yeah. yeah. But the productivity is in the bottom line. And right. I, I do work at a financial institution, so that's very important because the bottom line is 
the bottom line. <laughs> that's the number. <laughs> really is, that's the number that we're looking key. at. That's the key, and all those types of things. The key so, and the bottom. So line. I, I just think, I just think it's important for us to kind of look back up and look at our lives and go, okay, what is the doing, and what is the doing good? Right. Oh, I think, I think when we we talked about, uh, you know, you rest doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. Rest doesn't just mean don't do all these things. It means there's also this great uh, buffet of things you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Those those positive things, right. those encouraging things. It doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean vacancy. And I think that's what that drives people away from Christianity a lot because they think, oh, there's all this stuff I'm not going to be able to do anymore. Right. They're only focused on the no's. They're not right. focused on the do's. Ah, see, the Bible is a book of do's, not a book of don'ts. If that's we right. do the do's, we don't have time for the don'ts. Exactly right. I listened to a podcast, and this is right off the top of my head, because you were saying this. I was listening to a podcast that was talking about the the um, lost art of boredom. And no, seriously, and how because we don't allow ourselves to get bored, we have we're starting to lose our creativity. Absolutely. We're starting to lose the lose the edge. Of not just sitting around. You, 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 you've heard your kids. I'm bored. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good. You know, what can I do? I don't know. Figure something out. Yep. Be creative. Figure something out. And I've noticed that my son is older. As, uh, as he's getting older and older, he's less and less of being bored because he's starting to be a little bit more creative in some yeah. of his things, and, and, which I love. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, there's nothing wrong with being bored. There's nothing wrong with being vacant, like you said. Take a moment. Sit in the chair. And do nothing. Stare at the freaking wall. You in the language tonight. Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. I'm trying to be sensitive. This library is bringing out an <laughs> ugly, ugly sensitive. side of your vocabulary. I'm trying to be sensitive. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I'm, I, think, I think we're in complete agreement. All right. Once so some, some, takeaways, some takeaways from this, and, we, and we've gone to probably a, a couple of conversations here for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, this and may be another two-parter. That's point. fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've had to wait until the second week for some takeaways of this. And I think some takeaways, um, and, and jump in here, Doug, if you think, but I think some takeaways are just take a moment to, to back up a little bit from your life and go. Hit the brakes. Okay. What am, I, what am I doing? What do I need to do? What do I need to say no to? Can't grow unless you learn to say no. What, do, am I doing start, some things? Start, start with self-examination. Exactly. This is, man, yeah. this is such a critical point, especially if you're a Christian in the Bible, even if you're not. You will never improve, grow, become something more or better if you don't examine yourself, you honestly, to. and look at the things you're doing and ask yourself, why am I doing this? And, and go after hard answers. Don't just stop, well, I do this because my kids. Are... No, no, no. Why are you doing it? Right, right. What are you getting out of it? Right. So that's where I would start. So, then I would start with the yeah, yeah. Look at it. Set, so maybe stare at maybe it, saying, and then start saying no. <laughs> so maybe say no. Maybe starting to to do some no practice with ourselves mm. is a good is a good great thing. place to start. A great place to start saying no, and and we can start with such the the simplest little things like the second bowl of ice cream. No. Why do we have to start with ice cream? I don't know. It's because it's some of the. Can we start with no some of the things we got on, problems with? Okay? No seconds on Look, spinach. Look, I've got a messy life. All right, my life is messy. I overdo the ice cream. That I'm makes sorry. Me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> uncomfortable about this. <laughs> May, we, there's some simple things we can start with ourselves and start examining ourselves and saying no, and then I think we can move into saying no to some of those relationships that are sucking the life out of us. Yeah, hopefully. And then, and then, uh, and then I think we can start to say no to some of the. Some some of our closer, maybe our family members, you know, maybe it's our kids. Maybe our kids need no practice. You were telling me about the kid that, that the parent told them no, and they slammed the door. And it's like, right. oh, we need some more we need some no, right. more no rehearsals yes. so that you know no how to practice. handle a no. You need no practice. No practice. Because, so let's do yeah. some no practice. Um, some other things we talked about. Um, taking some time. Taking some time to back off. Back off of social media. I know people that take a social media break uh, Man, during a season. We all need it. We all need it. Give, we your, should, give we yourself should a social that. media. We should have a. They should have some kind of uh, virus that comes out and makes it so nobody, everybody has to be locked away from their devices for a month. Wow, wouldn't that be awesome? That, well, it, uh, that's it's going to be devastating. Be a computer virus. It's going to be devastating it? in the world. We ha we have those already. We've I know. had those for a long time. I know you know that. I'm sorry. I don't mean to prey on your 
Damn make you. you. Make your ignorance. You're not ignorant. I've had enough. So take some time. Uh, maybe take some seasons in our life, in our families, in our life with our with it's our very squad spiritual. and say, hey. It's very spiritual to do something in a season. <laughs> in a, Of course it is, naturally. A week, a month, and say, hey, we're, we're just going to be we're just gonna be a family at home. Winter's a good time to do that. Perfect. Which January and February, in my opinion, are the great times just to say, you know what? No basketball, no no aqua aerobics no underwater fire prevention classes we're going to just be at home we're going to read we're going to tell stories we're going to love each other we're going to get to know each other we're going to play some board games yeah we talked about the settlers and the pioneers and stuff like those people had winters when they couldn't go farm and hunt and stuff what did they do there was no TVs or internets or even a radio. No they had candles and maybe a book yeah and they would sit and read books together yeah. there's nothing wrong with that you right can, all the, look at all these books we have here. You could <laughs> read for a, a, a year of winters. And... Did you ever see the the post that somebody put out? I wish I could find that. We're just like the five best toys ever in huh. the history of children, and it's like number one was a stick. No, number one was a box. Empty box. Empty box. Number two was a stick. stick. Number three was like a piece of string, <laughs> and of course, when you put all these together, like number four was a a wrapper tube, and then dirt was like the number f- <laughs> best toy Dirt's ever a great made. Toy. And it's like, and especially if you could put, if you can combine any of those toys together, oh, yeah, 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 how yeah. much fun can you be? Yeah. We got it. Those are some of the things we got to get back. And it's not that we got to get back to the primitive lifestyle of humanity, the caveman. We just got to get back to just having some time for nothing, being, being bored. It's okay to be bored. So take some time to sit, think, stare, dream. I would say most of our, act- Quit being so busy. most of our activities that we engage in, in a modern world, the activity is the star. And we need to start to wow. engage in activities where the people involved are the stars. Wow. That is so good. Quote that! That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. I'm going to meme that up here. Meme it. When we're done with this. Meme. Quit being part of activities where the activity is the star. You don't have to be an activity, baby. To be in my I love it. I love it. Ooh. I love it. I feel good. I feel good about this. This is good. I feel like we get we got some place. We pounded it out, we man. Did. We did. Solid. We did. Fist bump. Okay. You've you've enjoyed another episode. You should probably be sending us money, but it's still free. So like, subscribe, comment, and share because YouTube says we should tell you. I thought to we do were that. Gonna do that. Oh yeah. I'll cut this out. No, it's fine. Don't you do any in. of that. Don't. I just said I was never going to say that. Do not like, subscribe, I, su- I don't care I what you're doing right now or how tempted you I, are. It's not, hey, look, it's not, not about, subscribe. it's not about the subscriptions. It's not about the likes. It's about making we're sure not, that you're changed. Yeah, you're we're, making, not, we're not you're, monetized. We want to be change agents. We yeah. want to be change agents. We want to help you. We want to help create goodness in your life. There's so. no money. We're not selling you any products yet. 